So lately I've been thinking a lot about how to optimize my everyday life, all the way from what shoes I'm wearing, what clothes am I wearing, what gear am I wearing when I'm at the gym, what am I eating, and what are the best supplements that I can take to go ahead and influence any of this. And then I quickly started to realize that all this costs a lot of money. Buy this, buy that, optimize this in this way by getting these boots, by getting this food. Oh, this is the ultimate supplement. But very rarely do we stop to think about some of the lowest hanging fruit because what, honestly, it's boring. And this got me thinking about a couple of things that I could optimize, but one of the things that I'm gonna be talking about today is sleep. Yes, boring old sleep, guys. It's been several years since I started Started thinking about my sleep and it all started with a book that was called why we sleep it is a great book i really invite you guys to go ahead and give it a read i'll leave it down in the comments below if you want to find out more about this book every human that is worried about their sleep should read it the person that wrote that book was on the joe rogan podcast one of the leading scientists in the, in, in the field of sleep and therefore why we really sleep his name is matthew walker and if you haven't seen his research i highly highly suggest that you guys go ahead and look at it why the hell are you talking about this well first of all we got to start off with the question why we sleep why do we need sleep just so you guys get a clearer picture everything on this planet sleeps yes every single living organism in this planet sleeps and during sleep we are really not able to do much our brain literally puts us into this locking mode where we can't really move any of our limbs can you imagine if you started acting out a zombie nightmare that wouldn't end up great or if you were running from Jason or Freddy Krueger or I don't know, whoever you fear, grandma. It wouldn't be the greatest thing. So you are in this lockdown mode in which you can't do anything. And you can either think about it, this in two ways. One, either nature really messed up and put the worst design flaw ever in the history of living organisms or this has a purpose so why do we sleep well during sleep it just so happens that our body recovers from just about everything that we do sleep is a period of time in which our body rests and regenerates all these systems such as our nervous system it re-energizes our focus it recalibrates our hormones our muscles our recovery it sets our emotions to neutral have you ever had that time where you went to bed super mad about something and then you just woke up and you're like that wasn't so bad after all yeah sleep does all that resets all the values in your head to kind of zero it just neutralizes everything it brings your body to like this restful mode where you are back at ground zero obviously this is a gross oversimplification of what's happening in your body but trust me this is very very complex stuff and if you are more interested and if you really want to do a deep dive i really recommend that you go read that book why we sleep again it'll be down in the description below i have no affiliation with this but it's such a great book that i highly recommend it to everybody especially if you are an athlete so you guys are starting to get a feel of why sleep is important everybody does it duh you know you you know you you've slept before if not you wouldn't be here so so now that you know some of the basics that it really helps out with just about anything that happens in the human body, now let me tell you what happens if you don't get any sleep. It appears that 16 hours is the breaking point of where most bad things start to happen if you don't sleep. After 16 hours of sleep, you're actually considered to be just as impaired as a drunk person driving. And this only takes 16 hours so for your body to only need about eight hours to repair this and bring you back to a normal state is actually nothing short of incredible another thing that happens is you can't make new memories ever thought about that time when you were reading a book and you read it again and you read the same sentence again and you read the same sentence again and you just were not able to actually memorize what it was saying don't worry it's happened to all of us the reason for it is Apparently, your brain decides to start shutting down a lot of the things that are happening out there. So you technically start to lose the ability to make new memories the more sleep deprived you are. You start to fall into this loop where you can make new memories and you also kind of turn everyday life into like this deja vu kind of thing that you know you've lived but you can't really remember that well. Another thing that happens, the further down we go down this path of 16 hours into however many hours 
you want to add, our brain starts to accumulate the small protein called beta amyloid right in the center. Every time you go to sleep, our brain literally drains this protein out of the brain so it doesn't accumulate. So what happens if it does accumulate? This is one of the biggest markers for Alzheimer's disease and dementia. So the less sleep you get, the more this protein starts to build up in your brain, which makes you the more likely to potentially get Alzheimer's down the line or some form of dementia. And if that doesn't scare you, let me tell you a little bit more. Not only is this obviously terrible for your brain that you're gonna be eventually forgetting everything down the line, but this also ages you a lot quicker. Sleep can age you dramatically. Have you ever seen that guy that's been working the night shifts and then you see them three years later and he was 21 when you met him and now he looks like he's 40? Sleep does that guys. It really is a very concerning thing, especially for some of our night workers, like our nurses or our doctors. It's actually very concerning, so much so that the World Health Organization is starting to actually classify night shifts as a carcinogen. Literally, sleep deprivation is a carcinogen now. That is crazy, guys. And this is where I wanted to talk to all the people that are a little bit more in the athletic realm. Not to say that this only applies to them, but this is where I really started to turn on a lot of light bulbs for me. The first point that I wanted to make with this, it impacts your immune system greatly. So what happens if our immune system gets impacted? We are more susceptible to everyday colds, viruses, and especially cancerogenic type of diseases that are out there. I believe it actually increases by 70% in some cases, when we have a terrible night's sleep, the next day we are 70% more likely to catch something that could potentially turn uh, carcinogenic somewhere down the line. 70%, 7-0, that is massive, guys. And again, obviously, if you're sick, you can't do any of your exercise, you can't run, you can't do Muay Thai, you can't lift, you can't do any, you can't do anything while you're sick, guys. So obviously, this is one of the reasons why I brought this to the forefront. Second thing that I think is super important, your cardiovascular system really takes a huge hit. I had a run just yesterday. I did a half marathon and it didn't go so well. And one of the main reasons was I didn't get enough sleep. I was sleep deprived. The event starts early at the morning. It started around 6.15, 6.20ish. I am horrible at waking up in the mornings. I've never felt good running in the mornings. I used to do runs at 5.30 in the morning and those were my worst times ever. And even if I did it consistently through several months, my body just never got used to it. I've never been a morning runner. I can force myself, but my miles felt bad. Every single one of them I dreaded. I never felt good. And so, Half marathons, that's always an issue I've always had that I know why they start early because, you know, streets get closed and stuff like that for oncoming traffic and all that. Also, the sun starts coming out and it starts burning people, you know, they usually tend to do these in the summer right in the middle of the freaking summer. And so I get why they do it, but it is terrible for the athletes, which is also something that the Olympic Committee started realizing. Maybe we should move these guys' training schedules a little bit later in the day. They start realizing that their athletes start performing better when they actually were waking up somewhere around seven eight o'clock naturally with the sun and started working out somewhere around eight o'clock you know somewhere eight nine o'clock and they started seeing wow all our athletes are doing so much better go figure they're not sleep deprived guys if you are sleep deprived it's going to impact your cardiovascular system massively guys please pay attention to this and now for all the people that have been watching my turkesterone videos and all the other videos that I have. For all you guys out there trying to take turkesterone to increase your testosterone levels, taking all that zinc, ZMA supplements, taking all that stuff. One of the first places that you should be looking before you tend to optimize anything else should be your sleep, guys. Sleep deprivation can massively impact your testosterone levels, guys. Not only that, it impacts your male reproductive system, guys. Yeah, we've all been there. We're so tired, we don't wanna do anything. We don't wanna go to the gym, we don't wanna run. We don't, we've all been there. And I know this is something you've probably heard by now, but this is, again, the lowest hanging fruit. This is what people consider the most boring, but yet it's the easiest thing to actually help you get results. And it's free, you just sleep, it makes everything better, it makes your testosterone go up. If you're having libido problems, Guess what you need to do? And it feels good too. You go to sleep, you wake up, everything's working. You feel better. You don't age as fast. Your body recovers. If you did leg day and you felt like crap, you probably don't feel like crap anymore. You actually 
have legs now, guys. And the last point that I kind of wanted to make, guys, without sleep, you die. You literally die. The longest human to have ever gone without sleep has done it for 11 days or a total of 264 hours. That's the longest any human has ever gone, any recorded human has ever gone without sleeping. You literally die. Like the Guinness Book World Book Record said, no, we don't want to do a competition of this. So this is one of the few things you will not find on the Guinness Book Records. So guys, I just kind of wanted to bring this up to the forefront. Obviously, we all sleep. If not, once again, we wouldn't be here. But sleep is so important, and I think we underestimate it all the time. Once again, because it's the lowest hanging fruit. It's the boringest thing, I think, that most people do. And right now, especially in this culture nowadays of I'll sleep when I die. And I'm totally guilty of doing that. When I was going through college, I had three jobs. I was doing 21 units while I was in, in the university. I did not sleep at all. And I always took pride on that, like, oh, I'll sleep when I die kind of mentality. You know, I didn't say it that way, but I definitely brought it to heart. I was getting like four hours of sleep, which is probably one of the reasons why my memory is so crappy at this point. I've, it is important for all you guys out there with athletic endeavors. It is super, super important, obviously not for just those reasons. But in this situation, for me, I have noticed a massive impact in that just getting enough sleep has brought. I feel a lot better throughout the day. My focus is there. My mood is way more stable. I obviously get my gains, so I'm, I think I'm doing pretty okay. My testosterone levels are always in a decent spot. They're in the 700 to 800 level. I'm 31 years old and they haven't been decreasing. If anything, they kind of increase every time I start to actually take care of my sleep even more. The things that has helped me out the most with my sleep and just getting into a rhythm of sleeping better has been waking up and going to bed at the exact same time or trying to hit very similar times. Just doing that in the daily basis has helped me out tremendously, guys. Another thing that I do on the daily basis is I make sure that my my room is super super dark this helps me turn off the lights up here a lot quicker I think it starts setting up the tone a lot better and I get sleepier a lot quicker and lastly one of the things that really helps out is to try and cut out any stimulating thing that you might be doing prior to going to bed let me explain. If you were watching a terror movie, if you were watching anything scary, you were playing really creepy video games, or if you just had a run 30 minutes prior to going to bed, it's gonna take you some time to wind down. So I would highly recommend to try to get those activities out of the way early in the day. Once again, guys, these are only some of the things that have helped me improve my sleep. I really hope that you take some of these ideas and really apply them to your life if possible. I think it's gonna greatly benefit you in the long run. It's only gonna help you feel better, perform better, and just overall do better. So with that being said, guys, I hope you found this video hopeful. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Sace Experience. Comment if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll be seeing you guys on the next video. Zay, out. Peace.